Bell and Gossett EHSC Service Video How to Replace the Seals on Your EHSC Pump. Today, we'll walk step by step through the process of replacing the seals on a Series E HSC double suction centrifugal pump. We will remove the mechanical seal without removing the upper half of the casing and without the universal extraction tool. This process should take 30 minutes to an hour. The process is the same for both the outboard and inboard sides of the pump, with slightly fewer steps required on the inboard side. Therefore, we will illustrate the process for the outboard side and indicate how the procedure varies for the inboard side. Before you begin, isolate the pump from its power source. Then, be sure to close off the valves on both sides and drain the pump. Consult the IOM manual for complete instructions. Please note that all torque values for screws and bolts mentioned in these instructions are listed in the IOM. First, remove the four bearing gland bolts on the outboard side of the pump. Remove the bearing gland and its gasket to expose the outboard bearing. Note, the following step is only required for the outboard bearing. Unlock the outboard bearing by removing the tab washer and lock nut. Bend back the tabs of the tab washer. Using a spanner wrench, unfasten the lock nut from the shaft. Be sure to secure the shaft so it does not rotate while removing the lock nut. Slide both the tab washer and lock nut off of the shaft. Once the bearing is fully exposed, the bearing housing can be removed. Remove the four bolts that secure the bearing housing to the casing. Separate the bearing housing from the pump casing with jacking screws. Locate two small holes positioned 180 degrees apart on the bearing housing. Thread each of the two jacking screws into the bearing housing and tighten the screws until the seal between the bearing housing and casing is broken. Pull the bearing housing with the bearing and lip seal still assembled off of the shaft. Use pry bars or a bearing puller if needed. Separate the elements of the bearing housing assembly, the lip seal and bearing, as well as the shoulder ring on the outboard side. Note, only the outboard bearing housing contains a shoulder ring inside of it. Now, we will remove the mechanical seal. Remove the four bolts that attach the seal gland to the stuffing box. Remove the seal gland and its O-ring. The seal gland should have the stationary face of the mechanical seal embedded within it. Separate the seal's head, pins, and O-ring from the seal gland. Remove the rotating face of the mechanical seal from the shaft. Note. The outboard mechanical seal will have a shoulder ring placed against the shaft step that must also be removed. Gather your replacement O-rings, gaskets, bearings, lip seals, and mechanical seals. Make sure all parts are thoroughly cleaned. Reassemble your EHSC pump, starting with the outboard end first. Begin by replacing the shoulder ring against the shaft step. Note. Only the outboard mechanical seal requires a shoulder ring placed against the shaft step. Then, slide the rotating face of the mechanical seal onto the shaft against the shoulder ring. Now, put together the static face of the mechanical seal and insert it into the seal gland. First, locate the two pinholes inside the seal gland and insert the pins. Note. Some seal sizes only require a single pin. Next, lightly grease the seal gland O-ring and gently roll it into the groove located on the seal gland. Align the static face of the mechanical seal with the pins and slide it into the seal gland. Slide the whole assembly onto the shaft against the stuffing box. Now, the rotating and static faces of the mechanical seal are in contact with one another, and thanks to the design of the EHSC, 
there is no need to set a working length. Fasten the assembly to the stuffing box with four screws. Now, reassemble the bearing housing assembly. First, grease the inner diameter of the bearing housing and place the bearing shoulder ring inside. Center the ring as accurately as possible and stick it to the housing. Note, only the outboard bearing housing requires a shoulder ring. Using a bearing press, push the bearing into the bearing housing until it sits snugly against the internal wall. Then, lightly grease the lip seal and slide it into the back of the bearing housing with the groove facing away from the bearing. The seal should be flush with the bearing housing. While wearing insulated gloves, put an induction heater through the center of the assembly and heat it until the inner race of the bearing is between 200 and 250 degrees Fahrenheit. This will expand the inner diameter of the bearing to make assembly easier and help prevent it from being damaged when it is placed over the shaft. Do not exceed 250 degrees, otherwise you may damage the rubber lip seal. Slide the entire bearing assembly onto the shaft within 10 minutes after heating it. If the bearing is allowed to cool down, it will contract, making it difficult to slide onto the shaft. Note, make sure the bearing housing is oriented correctly. The grease port should face upwards. Once the bearing housing is seated against the casing, let the bearing cool. When the bearing is cool, lightly grease the balls in the ball bearing. Lock the outboard bearing in place. Slide the tab washer onto the shaft against the bearing. Thread the lock nut onto the shaft and tighten it firmly with a spanner wrench. Bend the tabs of the tab washer into at least one of the grooves on the lock nut to secure it. Note, only the outboard bearing must be locked into place. Place the bearing gland gasket into position and fasten it to the bearing housing with four bolts. Note, make sure the bearing gland drain port is facing downwards. Now, fully grease the bearings. Remove the plug from the bottom of the bearing gland if it isn't already removed. Use a grease gun to inject grease into the bronze fitting at the top of the bearing housing assembly. If the bronze fitting is not already inserted, place it into its port located on top of the bearing housing. Add grease until you see it spilling out of the hole that you unplugged on the bottom of the bearing gland. Replace the plug. Repeat the entire disassembly and assembly procedure for the inboard side of the pump. Take care to note when certain steps should be omitted for the inboard side of the pump. The job is complete. To check your work, rotate the shaft, either by hand or with a spanner wrench hooked into the key slot at the end of the shaft. If it rotates smoothly without much resistance, you're ready to connect the coupling and attach the motor. If you have any questions, please contact Bell & Gossett Technical Support.